Today on Storytelling for the Screen, seven tips on how to prepare to shoot your film or pre-production. So you've got your story and you've got your script and you're ready to shoot. So you want to wait actually and do some preparation because if you don't do some of the tips I'm talking about in this video, it's going to cause you to make a lot of mistakes. And so to make your experience of shooting better and to make your film better, let's follow these seven tips. I also want to mention that this is really an overview of the process and there's a lot of details that I don't go into, but check out some of the links below that will help you as well as other videos that I'll be sending out in the future. Tip number one is make a storyboard first. A storyboard is basically a comic strip with just images that help you plan your film before actually filming. A lot of people do these hand-drawn pictures that show each shot they're going to make and that's sort of the traditional version. I find that actually for beginners and for a lot of filmmakers that's actually really hard because a lot of us don't draw. So what instead you just take out your your phone whether it's on your, your cell phone or just a camera that you have and you can just take images with people who stand in for your actors or your actual actors in your location planning out your shots by taking photos or taking a video camera and doing short little video clips to plan out your shots. In this way, you can actually see your location with your stand-ins for actors or actual actors and actually see the shots in a rough draft form. Uh, Robert Rodriguez of El Mariachi and Desperado, as well as uh, Spy Kids, he does this method and it actually helps him uh, without having to draw out all those storyboards. Tip number two, casting. Now hopefully you've followed my advice and actually wrote a story and a script with people that you know and that you can trust. Um, if you didn't and you have a need for actors, I highly recommend that you go to a college or a acting program or film program that's local because these kind of people really want the experience and will work for free or for very low cost. Plus they may actually have some basic skills that they've learned through their program and then they'll be perfect for you. Um, you can use also online call boards, which I've used in the past, which actual professional actors who want experience and want a real, uh, something for the real, will also be very useful. Um, finally, when you're working with actors and people that you don't know, you want to use memorandum of understandings. These are basically informal contracts that really list out the responsibilities that they need to do, including memorizing their lines, preparing for the role, showing up on time and ready to go for their shoot. Um, and it's really important that you have this because it's basically a way to make sure they know what's expected of them and also they know that what they're going to get out of it, whether it's a small fee or the real or whatever they are, you promise them in the contract. Number three is recruiting your crew. Now the crew are the people behind the camera that are going to help you either shoot the film or record sound or help set up lighting equipment. Um, and the same rule applies for crew as it does for cast, that you should use people that you trust, first of all, and if you don't have people that can help you with your crew, then go, going to film programs that are nearby, colleges, or other types of film programs, and people who want experience will work for low cost or for free. Again, I would use memorandums of understanding to make sure that they're really clear on what their responsibilities are, as well as checking references to make sure that people that you can trust. Number four is preparing your equipment. Now if you're just starting out and you have a limited budget, um, there's three levels of equipment that I can recommend. Now the first level is just using your cell phone's video camera. Now this sounds like really basic equipment, and it is, but in reality, even professionals have used iPhones to film their movies. A film called Tangerine actually won awards at Sundance and did very well because they used iPhone so effectively. Uh, the main drawback with iPhone is that it's so, it's so light, you want to have some kind of stabilization device to make sure the camera is steady, as well as something to record good sound because the microphone on the iPhone or any cell phone video camera won't be very good. On the second level is a camcorder. Now these are consumer grade HD video camcorders that we use a lot because they're reliable, they're easy to use, and you can get pretty good quality picture, pretty good sound using the onboard mic uh, to make your film. And so I use it a lot with my students because they can start right away making decent films. Um, you may want to enhance it with a uh, microphone that you mount on top. We use a road mic that has a good sound as well as using a shoulder rig to help create stability. It helps you do a lot of different shots um, and it's relatively inexpensive. As well as you can do tracking shots with different configurations. 
On the third level is DSLR cameras. Now these cameras are originally made for photography, but they actually take really good video. Um, they have higher processors that really give you a much better definition of an image. And so I recommend them if you're really trying to make the quality higher. Now the downside of DSLRs is that they take very bad sound. So you're definitely gonna need an additional mic on the camera. They also don't have some basic features sometimes like headphone jack, sometimes they overheat, and so you just want to be careful. If you're going to go DSLR, um, definitely do your research because they can take great images, but there's a lot of tricks to make sure they run properly. Alright, so you might also want to invest in lighting equipment. Um, sometimes when you're shooting, often the lighting's not ideal, and so you might want to buy a few basic lights. Sometimes you can just go to the hardware store and get a basic lighting setup, or go on Amazon.com and get a basic lighting setup. Sometimes you want to use a reflector to shine light that's pre-existing in the space onto the actor's face. Uh, and so lighting equipment can be very useful. Number five is scouting out your locations. Now, hopefully you've picked a story or a script that these locations you have access to. If you decide to make a story around a location you don't have access to, it's important to get permission. I've shot sometimes in a park, which I had to ask permission from the park service and the film commission, and that takes a lot of paperwork. Uh, and if you want to shoot at like a Starbucks or whatever, that often causes a lot of problems because the corporate office doesn't want you to film there. So just be very careful about permissions because you may get kicked off and you may get in trouble. Um, the other thing to worry about with locations is lighting. Uh, make sure that you're aware of what time you're going to be filming, especially if you're outdoors. The lighting shifts around a lot and will impact your film. And then also, if it's really dark, you want to be aware of what lighting you're going to need. And then finally, you want to be worried about sound because I've been in situations where the sound can totally kill your film, especially if you're using a lot of dialogue, uh, when there are people in the background making noise. Um, I've shot in locations where there were a hundred kids screaming and yelling, almost destroyed the entire film just because I didn't do the research about when those kids were going to be there, and so you just want to be very careful with sound. Number six is organization. Now, as you can tell, there's a lot of moving pieces that you have to worry about. So it's really important that you write down your schedule and when people are supposed to be there, what equipment you're supposed to bring, what design elements are supposed to be there. And so you want to make sure that's all written down and that each actor and each crew member has a call sheet which tells them when they're supposed to be there, what they're supposed to do to prepare, and just all the items that they need to know in order to be ready to go. Number seven is fundraising. Now, maybe you've done all your pre-production and you realize you need more resources. So I can recommend two websites that are really good for raising those resources. And one is kickstarter.com and indiegogo.com. I've used Indiegogo. It's a great way to kind of get friends and family and people who don't even know to give you money to make your film. Um, also, I would be careful about you doing this because if you can actually make your film for a lot less, then it's a lot of work raising money. It's actually just like making a film Fundraising is a whole other project unto itself, and so be cautious about using that. It can be kind of a trap. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it and share it and subscribe to my channel. Uh, next week, we're going to do production and all the process that will make shooting go well for you, and we'll see you next week.